Hi there. Now for this part, part B, we're asked to find the maximum value of h of theta, where h of theta is given as this equation here. And then go on to find the smallest value of theta in this interval for which the maximum value occurs. You'll notice that I've put up here for part A the angle alpha that we found. So how does this compare then with what we've just been doing? Well, the part in the brackets here looks very similar to 2 sine theta minus 4 cos theta, only we're replacing the theta with 3 theta. So what I can say then is that this is identical then to 4 plus 5 times and we're going to have exactly the same form as this. That will be r sine of, but instead of theta here, it's going to be replaced with 3 theta. 3 theta minus, and we've got alpha. Okay, that's not going to change. That's going to be 1.1071 and so on. And then all of this is squared. So the question is, what is r? Well, I'm just going to return back to what we should know already, and that is that, remember, expressions of this form can be put into the form r sine of x minus alpha, if you've got something like this. Only the x that we're using here is 3 theta now, okay? And the r is always equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, where a and b are the coefficients of sine x and cosine x in this example here. So just going to work out then what r is going to be. We'll just recap by putting down that we've got 2 sine of 3 theta, okay, minus 4 cos 3 theta, and this is identical then to a sine 3 theta minus b cos 3 theta. Okay, so it's going to take on this form here. So you can see that a is the 2. We'll just put here where a equals 2. And clearly the b is equal to the 4. And so therefore, for r, we know that r is the square root of a squared plus b squared, so it's going to be square root of 2 squared plus 4 squared. In other words, 4 plus 16, 20, the square root of 20. And so that means that h of theta can be rewritten then as being identical to 4 plus 5 times all of the square root of 20 for r times the sine of all of 3 theta minus 1.1071 and so on and that's all squared. Now we've got to find the maximum value of h of theta, the maximum value then of this. And what I notice is that the only thing that's going to vary in this is the sine function here. Remember, sine uh, as a function can go between minus 1 and 1. And if we're to get a maximum value, then we really want to make this 1. And so, therefore, we need to consider when sine of 3 theta minus 1.1071 and so on is 1. And this is going to give us our maximum value for h. And that maximum value then will be the 4 here. And then it's going to be plus. And the sine function here is 1. So we just get the root of 20 squared root of 20 when you square it is going to be 20 times it with the 5 and you got 100 so that maximum value is going to be 104 and we've got to find out now at what value of theta the smallest value of theta that this maximum value occurs and that's going to occur when 
the sine of the angle, which gives us 1, the angle has to be 90 degrees, but we're working in radians, and that is pi upon 2 radians. Okay, The sine of pi upon 2 radians gives us 1. And so, therefore, what we've got is that 3 theta minus 1.1071, and so on, must be equal to pi upon 2. That's the first value, then, that's going to give us 1 here. And this is going to lead on, then, to the smallest value of theta in this interval here. Rearranging this, then, for theta, theta is just going to be equal to 1.1071, and so on, added to the pi upon 2, and then all of that is divided by 3. And if you work that out, what you get is 0 0.893 to three significant figures, 3SF there for short. Okay, so I hope that's given you some idea on how to tackle that kind of question.